welcome to the interesting podcast episode number 194. This episode is with the fantastic, or should I say fabulous, Derek Bosco, who is such a blast to hang out with. In this episode, we talk about his mom putting him and his brothers into a bunch of different activities growing up, starting out breakdancing, working as a DJ, injecting his culture into his work, the process of making the fabulous Filipino brothers, being a saloon owner in Obi-Wan Kenobi, creating your own stuff, and so much more. Be sure to check him out as Kino, who's back for the new season of Mayor of Kingstown, now streaming on Paramount+. Plus. Derek is awesome, and you're going to love him. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. Please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 194, with Derek Bosco. Theme song time! know you're in LA, but I also know that you're from Pittsburgh. California, though. But it gets confusing because your Pittsburgh, Sands H, is still a steel city. How weird is that? Yes. Well, you know, when they Steel Town came out west, uh, they went there and it was the little brother to uh, the big brother. So all our high school stuff over there is the same Pittsburgh Pirates, same colors, everything. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so strange. They just didn't want, they like, it's still us. We just want to know. We're going to differentiate by dropping the age, but that's that's as far as we're going to go. <laughs> Which, you know, honestly, I kind of respect that. If you move into a new town, you got to be like, this is who's here. Yeah. I get it. I get it. So what, paint this picture for me. What is it like growing up in Pittsburgh? Because it's a smaller town in the Bay Area. So it's near, you know, bigger towns. But does it feel like a smaller town? You know, when you, grow up there or wherever you grow up you don't think of anything as small or big it was just good point what it what it was and it was predominantly there's a big filipino community there a big oh, Italian cool. community and black and mexican and i grew up my uncle across the street was the mayor my godfather was a oh. firefighter so growing up it was like i could be anything which was kind of nice you know I bet. So you saw a mayor and you're like, I'd rather break dance. <laughs> <laughs> well, we give credit to our mother, Aida Bosco. Yeah. Um, she's the matriarch of the family. And growing up to keep us out of trouble, she gave us everything she never had. So we had martial arts class. We had voice class. We had piano class. We had tap dancing, jazz. We had all, everything that she wanted to take as a child, she gave to us. That's neat to come from your mom. Yeah. Because normally you think it's like a kid wants to try all these things and your mom had the wherewithal to be like, no, no, you're going to try these things. And you guys were cooperative? Yeah, we were very cooperative. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. So I come from a family of five. I'm the oldest and I have three brothers and a sister. Mm -hmm. So we kind of just did everything together, you know? Yeah. And we have a big family. So we'd have people over, you know, playing music, singing. There was always you know, like a poker table going on or mahjong table and someone singing and someone cooking. Cool. So it, it was almost like a party 24-7. That's what it's like growing up Bosco. Dude, you know, not a bad way, I think. I'm seeing I'm seeing some threads being built already. See, I, I'm an older brother as well. I don't have a squad. I have a younger brother. But as an older brother, I've realized that a lot of things that we got into, for better or worse, a lot of times were my idea. <laughs> So I got blamed for a lot of them, but also I'm like, let's do this. And he was like, absolutely. So when I think of break dancing, I got to be honest, I, I was thinking it was your idea. But Mama Bosco knew what was up. You know, she didn't know she was training us for that. So sure. when break dancing came out, we were just like, oh, we could do that. And it was like a martial arts move or it was like a dance move we had learned. So I choreographed the moves and we became one of the top 10 uh, breakdancing groups in the Bay Area, which eventually led us to get scholarships at the San Francisco Ballet Company. Dude. So we were like, we were like the little Billy Elliot kids being bussed in. Yeah. Uh, for the lessons. Did you have the cardboard? Yeah, we had cardboard. We had linoleum. We had the, there's like a wood paneling siding we used to get. And you put like 
furniture polish on it to make it even more slippery. Dude, did, is it true that you put salt in the cardboard? Is that a thing? Well, we never did that. Maybe they did, but we yeah. never did that. <laughs> but maybe that's the East Coast thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, maybe. <laughs> that's how you can tell the difference between an East and West Coast breakdancer. Same cardboard, but one is a little saltier. <laughs> <laughs> how long did you do that see we did that from like 1980 to 85 it's a long time um, yeah it's quite a bit of time and we did the best we could there and then my parents uh, had some bad business deals and my mom said i'm gonna take the kids to los angeles and she put us all in a van with a hundred dollars and drove us down here and got us started as dancers and everyone said dancers you need to be an actor and that's how we kind of made that transition really yeah i love that the, it's kind of like that artist spirit right just like follow where your gut goes and be like now we're doing this and just being open to the new experience uh it's my mom again i eat a box because i don't think i would have thrown all the kids in the car and came <laughs> <down here. laughs> all you need is one all you need is one person to be like we're going this way yes do you remember your first professional gig oh i know right well when we were dancing we, we danced everywhere. We danced at all the football games and baseball games. And cool. uh, we opened up, we opened up for Prince in the Bay area. What? Uh, yeah. He didn't go on till like 2 AM and my mom didn't let us stay. <laughs> Fair. You know, I think the latest we stayed was 12 and we're like, come on, we want to see Prince. And then we are like, she took us home. But in Los Angeles, I think the first thing was probably like a Coca-Cola commercial I did with my brothers. Nice. Uh, and then after that, I'm trying to think, gosh, I should go on my IMDb. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be cool to have your own squad, like, because acting, the journey itself can be so lonely to have like brothers that are also doing it and kind of like, I don't know, that's got to be kind of neat. Your own like built in community. Well, it's a blessing and it's a curse, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and when there. we were younger, we used to fight about it because there'd usually be one Asian role, you know? Oh, Right. So we were all in competition with each other. And as we've grown older and work together, we know each other's casting and we'll be like, oh yeah, this isn't me. You don't want me. You want my other brother, you know, you want Darian right. or you want Dante or you want Dion or no, no, this one's mine, you know? Sure. And when you know each other's strengths, you can kind of campaign for each other. That makes sense. Yeah. And I mean, hey, you know, being that you're the oldest one, you started the trend of the D names. I'll give it to you. No, no, it, that... That trend goes deep. It's oh, a, really? Uh, yeah, it's a Filipino tradition. Oh. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you, my grandparents' names are Damaso and Dolores. Great names. My dad's name is Darius, and his brothers and sisters are Danny, Deuce, David, Doris, and Dulce. What? Yeah. So my mom kept that tradition for the boys, and we're all Derek, Darian, Dante, and Dion. And my mother's name starts with an A, Aida. So then my sister is Ariana. Dude, have you ever asked them how long it took to name you guys? Because it's like, man, we've gone through a lot of D names already. Like, what's left? <laughs> uh, they, they had it picked out. I don't know. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like I came out of a book. I don't know, some kind of like <laughs> James Bond book. And then someone else came out of, you know, I think Dante's Inferno. And I don't know, Dionysio was like the god of love and war or something like that. This all checks out. They knew before you were born. It's like this next one, regardless, boy or girl, is Derek. You got to commit. <laughs> I understand. Well, no, if it was a girl, it had to be an A because my mom's name is Aida. Right, right, right. Okay, okay. Is it true that like super early on, you did an episode of Wings? Yes. Derek, did what? How? Wings, it was, it was so much fun to do. Um, I played this child prodigy uh, celloist and... Um, I was really young, though. I remember just being on stage. I was, when I was younger, I had a little bit of uh, imposter syndrome. Like, do they know it's me? Yeah. And I'm here, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Relatable. But um, everyone on the set was great. And um, three camera uh, sitcoms are my favorite format. Really? You don't see, yeah, you don't see too much of them anymore. Yeah. How come? Why, why were they your favorite? It was the best work week. You go in on a... Let's say it's a Monday through Friday week. You go in on a Monday, you do a table reading, and you're done. Oh. <laughs> Tuesday, you do uh, some wardrobe fittings, a uh, run-through, you know. This is a pretty short day. Wednesday, you do a run-through again, do it in front of the network, maybe start pre-taping, 
Thursday is like your big pre-tape day and they change lines, whatever. And then Friday, it's like a play, you know, oh. audience shows up, three camera, they, they announce you, you come out, you know, you wave, you do your show at the end, you get a big round of applause. After everyone goes home, you know, they might pick up a couple of themes, uh, but that's like your heaviest day, you know, it, wow. it's so fun. It's, it's the closest it is to a play, you know? Huh. What coming from like, you know, break dancing and like live performance and stuff like that. And then going into three camera, what was it like? Were you nervous? Cause wings is such an established show at the time. Yeah. You know, one thing I learned is that if the director doesn't say anything to you, you're doing a good job. There you go. You know? And at first I was like, wow, why aren't they saying anything to me? Cause what I was doing was good, you know? Yeah. And so once you learn that and settle into your skin, you go, Oh, if they're not talking to me, I'm doing my job. Yeah. I remember hearing that as well. It's like the best thing an actor can hear isn't good job. It's moving on. Yeah. It's like, we got it. We did it. You're like, oh, oh, cool. All right. I'm in. That's neat. I didn't realize that that was such, it was so much like a play because you don't think of, you think of the mediums as different being, you know, on mm -hmm. screen versus on stage, but it's shot the same. Very interesting. They may, they may go over a scene again. Yeah. And change a line or two here. But it's pretty much, uh, you know, you, we might do a thing two or three times. Sure. You know, and then we'll move on to the next one. And do they shoot like an entire episode in the week? Mm hmm Wow. That is fast. Yeah. Goodness gracious. How'd you end up in Sergeant Bilko? Wow. I'm trying to think of the audition. Um, I go deep, man. I know. <laughs> uh Sergeant Bilko. I, I just remember reading. It, they're all auditions, you know, and sometimes you're more right for the character and sometimes you're not, you know. And mm -hmm. I learned that, you know, when you do an audition, you got to do it the way you would do it. Yeah. And if, if what they're looking for, if you, what you present them is they go, oh, I could see that, then they hire you. I, and, you know, I, coming from dancing, I try to put as much dancing in as possible and they let me dance in it, which was awesome. Nice. Yeah. It's a good scene. Yeah, thank you. It might be one of my favorite Steve Martin movies. He's good in there. He really is. It's so funny. Phil Hartman's great. Every, just it's a great movie. It's a great movie. Mm -hmm. And then so I'm I'm like following the trajectory of your career. You got breakdancing opening for Prince. You got a guest star in Wings. You got Sergeant Bilko with Steve Martin. And it's like, where else can you go except for working with Harrison Ford? Dude, you just climbing the mountain here. Yeah, the mountain goes up and down. Yeah. <laughs> it's fair. You peaked too early, Derek. That's what happened. <laughs> you worked on Six Days, Seven Nights, which is a great movie. Holds up. I still really like it. Thank you. Where was that shot? Uh, in Hawaii. Uh, in Kauai. Dude. Yeah. What a gig. Yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a good time. It was a really good time. And um, the apple bit was my idea. I remember doing it in the audition. Really? Yeah. I love and it. when we went to the set, I was like, you know, on the audition, I ate an apple. Can I do it in the scene? And they're like, yeah. So they took all the apples from the set. Nobody could eat apples. And <laughs> I must have ate about 60 apples that day. And I was like, well, this is a big lesson. Don't really eat. Just like take a bite, you know, and keep chewing that and wait for the take to end and then spit. <laughs> yes. I, I have also learned that lesson the hard way, except for me, it was pizza. Bad idea. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've enjoyed pizza since. I, I just had a, I just had a scene where I had to eat pizza, and I was like, you know what? Is it okay if I don't eat it? And they're like, yeah, we don't recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> but but the property guys, uh, they made it nice and hot and toasty. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, the tempting. Yeah. That's great, though. Like you just said, you have to bring something like what your idea to the audition is, and you did, and look at that. It worked out. Mm -hmm. What was it like watching Harrison Ford work? Because he's like... A legit movie star like they don't make those anymore you know we weren't actually on set together because most of his scenes you know they were kind of we were trying to rescue him mm -hmm. um but he's a super sweet guy cool and i just remember meeting him and saying how i was a big star wars fan from back in the day and he was just super nice and he let me take pictures with him and uh dude yeah that's what i'm saying he's really cool that's cool so you go here and then I've actually I rewatched it in in preparation for this, but the debut's really good. Yeah, something I've found in your career that I think is really really cool that I don't see in all careers is how your culture kind of like 
coincides with a lot of the work that you do? That's been kind of a goal of mine, you know? Cool. I, I, I realized it too. Um, because you got to understand, when me and my brothers were um, coming up, they mm -hmm. didn't understand what a Filipino was. Sure. I mean, now we have Joe Coy, so there's more understanding. But still, sometimes people don't quite understand. So all the roles we were going up for were uh, either Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and sometimes just indescript Asian. And we'd say, can we play Filipino? And they'd be like, no, you look like too many people. We're going to let we're going to let them decide what you are. Oh. So, so my goal was to kind of inject my culture in there so that people from my culture could say, hey, if they could do it, I see myself up there, I can do it too. Yeah. And I've been, I was really fortunate. So for the debut, there was a thing called uh, Backstage, it's still around. Oh, yeah. And I, I'm familiar. I, I, um, I applied for a, a college thesis program, and that's how I met the director. And, and we did the short. And from the short, he did the feature. And it was the first time me and my brothers all got to work together, which was really fun. Yeah. How was that? Because it's it's a feature. So there is like, it's a bigger scale. Yeah. So it was different than breakdancing. You know, we all had our different roles and we all had our different ways of acting. And um, mm -hmm. it was just really fun. I don't know. You know, working on a set, you know, you're going to be there long hours. So when you're there with people that you love and you have a good time with, it just makes it all that more enjoyable. Oh, you know? I bet. Yeah. Did you have to do the the like performance scene? in the audition to the dancing yes no but growing up that was another thing my mom had us into was folk dancing so when they brought it up in the script and they said who can do this i was like i could do this yeah you know and so we trained we would shoot all day and then after the work day we'd have like a two to three hour rehearsal yeah. with the dance crew cool and, and that was that was a lot of fun because it brought me back and you know like i said we were working long hours but you were having so much fun. Yeah. It, it didn't matter. So obviously I get I get a little in the weeds when it comes to researching a guest. And I gotta tell you, Derek, you made for some treacherous some treacherous research here. Do you know how difficult it is to find and to watch the correct naked brown men? Wait, did you find it? I did. Wow, where'd you find it? It's it's in pieces throughout the internet, my friend. Now mind you, I don't recommend anyone searching for it because with a title like that <laughs> You can end up in neighborhoods you don't want to be, Derek. <laughs> I, man. Oh, <laughs> Who's Brian, idea? I apologize. <laughs> I apologize for your eyes. And what, what it's seen. It can't be unseen. <laughs> Whose idea was this title? I know you wrote it, so I need to talk to you. <laughs> uh me and my friend at the time, Adam G, we, we were roommates and we said, let's write something and shoot it. And we wrote this whole feature and we thought it was a, a, a kitschy name at the time, you know. Sure. That it, it will pique people's interest. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and it, was, it was an interesting independent shoot, you know. And uh, my brother Dion was financing it with his money from City Guys and so uh, we were piecing everything together and it, it, it was more of a learning experience, you know? Sure. Um, and to get your contracts done ahead of time so people don't pull any crazy stunts. Ooh, you know? smart. Mm -hmm. uh, but we learned that on that. That's why it never really got a release, you know? Okay. that's. I mean, that's the best film school, right? Is like doing it and figuring it out. Yes, I agree. And a lot of figuring it out is doing it wrong and then be like, ooh, let's not do that next time. <laughs> Even from a logistical standpoint, how did you get an entire concert crowd? That was the big thing. I was like, "What? It's so impressive." So we had a band, me and my brothers. Yeah. Uh, we we used to rap over a live rock and roll band before it was you know a thing, ah. and we were, we were a little ahead of our time, and we played all the clubs in Los Angeles. So it's just footage from different shows that we've done. Oh, that is so smart. Yeah. Look at you. Okay, okay. This is that indie spirit that I love. I love other actors, but I love even more the actors that don't like sit around and wait for the phone to ring. Like, I'm going to go out and make stuff. And that's so clever. You're already in a band, Life Imitates Art, and then you use that footage to... Derek, well done. Oh, thank you. How'd you end up in San Andreas? Oh, wow. So there was a casting director, forgive me, I can't remember her name, but she came to our acting class. 
Oh, cool. And she just watched some scenes and she just picked a handful of us and brought us down to audition. And um, I remember getting it and I had, I think I had to speak Vietnamese. So in the audition, I could, I could do an accent, which mm -hmm. was great, easy. But then when you show up, there's a book. Oh. And then they had a line in Vietnamese with the phonetics. And I was like, oh, hey, guys, I, I, I mean, I'm not really Vietnamese. <laughs> and, we, and we did a couple of some of the more basic lines. But then other that, they gave me other characters to play, which was awesome. That was all VO? All VO, yeah. Was it crazy? Because, I mean, San Andreas is one of, if not the best, Grand Theft Auto game. Like when that came out, we were like, I worked on that. A lot of us in the class were really excited and we would like, we ran to get a copy to play it so we could hear our voices. That's me. That's me. You know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you find yourself in the game? Yeah, I did a couple of times. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Wow. I mean, speaking of VO, you got to kind of spoof your brother in Avatar. I mean, career highlight? You know, that's one of those trivia things that if you're a true Avatar fan, uh -huh. People know that I did spoof him, you know. Uh huh. I may or may not be Derek. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I might have a white lotus tattoo. I don't know. Maybe. Just to say. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So uh, it, it was so fun to be part of that universe, you know, going in and they they film in Nickelodeon and you, you usually have the whole cast read it all together. Oh, cool. You know, um, so it was a lot of fun to do and to be part of that. And I think I did maybe. I know it's definitely one, but maybe they cut it into two things. But I just was like, man, I could come back and do this every week. Yeah, I bet. Just from a brother standpoint, it's got to be fun to get in there and be like, you know, there's a little family history here. Just like, I'm going to I'm gonna show up. You know, my little brother's doing a thing. I'm going to I'm gonna do a little thing, too. It's going to be it's gonna <laughs> be fun. <laughs> you know, a little, little mischievous, got to be. Well, you know, it's always fun to work together. He wasn't there that day that I worked. I don't Even better. I don't recall. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> but they had me embellish them. They're like, more, more. <laughs> I was like, all right, we'll do more. Right. You know, Dante, like, come on, you're Zuko, but not Zuko. You're, you're an actor's version of what people think Zuko is. This, it gets deep. It gets very deep. So then after Avatar, was it around this time that you started DJing? Uh, yeah. So, you know, growing up, uh, we were breakdancing and DJing and doing all that. And I'm, I, I just remember doing the DJing and uh, I have a photo booth too, was to like supplement my income as, as an artist because I was married and had a family and I had to do something, you know? That'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. Had you DJed before or it was something that you're like, oh, I could totally do this? Uh, you know, I was working some catering job, supplementing sure. it. And uh, the guy I was working for hired a DJ and I go, how much you pay that guy? He goes, I paid him, <laughs> I paid him eight hundred dollars. I was like, Woo! I, I could do that for six. There you go. And he was like, Are you good? And I was like, Give me a shot. And he gave me a shot, and I became his like corporate DJ guy. And then I got other gigs. And I, mind you, I'm not a, a mixed DJ. I'm more of a, a corporate DJ. I do weddings. I do events. I'm the guy that says. Ladies and gentlemen, the buffet is now open. And then there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that counts. That counts. It's a specific it counts, skill. Listen, though, having a, a real DJ company has gotten me a couple of jobs. Like, I went in uh, for a commercial audition, and they had, the cast director told me they already had their mind set on a guy. Mm -hmm. But I came in with a speaker, a microphone, and my, and my DJ equipment. And I go, what's the song you're playing? They go, oh, we're playing Walk This Way. I go, okay, I got it. And they're like, they told me the scene and I totally just did everything. I was like, ladies and gentlemen, you know, grab your daughters. It's the father daughter dance. And, and I did my whole spiel and they were like, whoa. And then I, when I was done with the audition, I went and I handed them all my cart. I'm DJ Derek, look me up on the internet. I got the job and then I got the job. Then they called me and they said, hey, can you bring your DJ here? My man. And I was like, yeah, I could do that for an extra thousand dollars. They're like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> Get it. I love that. So, like, what goes into DJing? Do you have to, like, do you make your playlist beforehand? Or you've got stuff queued up? Like, break this down for me. Well, you know, I've since retired from it. But you do, I usually do um, do everything beforehand. So, like, let's say you were getting married, Brian. I'd be like, okay, what year did you graduate high school? Oh, smart. For me, 2009, yeah. 2009. So then I would go to 2009. And I would get the top 40 songs from 2009. Then I'd say, what's your spouse? When did they graduate? And you'd tell me, and then I'd go in and I'd get, you know, 
let's say it was 2012. I'd get all those songs from 2012. Then I'd say, okay, you know, do your parents have a favorite song? And I just kind of curated around that. And we just, it all happens through like, you know, going out for drinks and like, and I have a questionnaire. And so then when we get to the event, I have everything preset, you know? Yeah. I already know, I, I've talked to your best man and he's told me the secret song that you guys would like, you know, get drunk to and rage. and Yeah. <laughs> So I, I have it all preset. It's almost like learning your lines, you know? Yeah, that's so smart because you're you're catering the experience to the people that you're building this experience for as opposed to just like winging it. No, well, you got to remember, this is, I always tell them, you know, being an actor, I'd say, you know, this is, this is your movie. This is your event. Yeah. And we got to curate the soundtrack to it because if the soundtrack is off, it's going to throw the whole day off. We want the whole day to run smoothly as if nothing happened and you shouldn't even notice me there you know right so it, it's the soundtrack to your life yeah i've never thought about it like that i like that how how important is it then because i i've got add so i bounce all over the place uh with my musical taste from a dj's perspective how important is it to match the vibe of the previous song when you have the next song do you have like we're going up for a little bit then we're going down then we're going this way or is it do you ping pong uh, I, I like to do a rock block where I play like a couple of songs of the same genre, even sometimes the same artist, you know, uh -huh. and then, and then you have to just read the crowd if you're losing them. And then you see like, oh, there's a Latin couple over there and over here. And then you might play some salsa songs, you know, and then you notice there's some, uh, um, older people there. You might play some big band, you know, and then sometimes you play stuff and it, no one, they all look at you like, what sure. do you do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you just got to find something else and just make a quick transition, you know? Right. That's a good skill to have as an actor, too, working on your feet, responding to the audience. Yeah, it's a total improv. It's a total uh, give and take and listening and receiving and then giving back, you know? Yeah. And like other people that also like kind of make their own stuff along that vein. How'd you get involved with the guild? Oh, okay. So I, I had no idea what it was. It's was another, like, I think I want to say it was the backstage thing. I submitted myself on it. You know, I have, I have agents, I have managers, but I wanted work, you know, and not everything was coming. I do the same thing. So I was like, oh, what's this little thing? It's shooting. And I almost didn't make it to the audition because it was raining. And I was like, you know what? Let's just go. And I went and I, and I went, I stopped by the local convenience store and I got this giant 64 ounce soda and I got glasses and I went into the room in character. I, I don't think I've ever done that before. <laughs> and, I, and I talked to them in character. I read the lines. I did everything and then I left and then I was walking down the hall. I was like, you know what? They might not work with me because they might really think that's who I am. You went too deep. Yeah. So I went back and, and I said, Hey guys, I just want to say thank you so much uh, for letting me play this for character. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And they all just went, Oh, you kind of scared us. That was really great. My man. We just didn't know if we could, we could actually work with someone like that for that long of a time. <laughs> you got him. I got him. <laughs> sometimes the method works and sometimes it doesn't. Right, right. You just got, but you got to try. And then make sure at the end, you're like, also, by the way, I'm not crazy. Yeah. That's incredible. I watched this video of you singing lyrics to the theme song, and you got to work with Victor Yared. Yes, who was a previous guest of yours. I, yes. I, I listened to his podcast. You did not. Yes, I did. Derek, get out of here. Well, I, I, come on, Brian. I have to do my <laughs> research as well. And you I still said to... yes? You're a brave man. <laughs> <laughs> How great was that? I love Victor. He's amazing. So uh, his wife and my wife uh, have been best friends since like the fifth grade. What? So yeah, so we see each other all the time. World. Yeah, our kids are, are are considered cousins. We they're they we, we've raised them together. So dude, I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, so I had I had a little in that makes sense. Okay, it's like why is why did Derek agree? Well, that was one of the reasons, <laughs> and the and the name Jedi Brian, my was man, a, was a huge. Uh, you know, I, what can I say? Yeah, <laughs> I might be safe here. <laughs> yeah, I I. Speaking of your daughter, I've seen Me and the Chef. It's great. <laughs> it's so good, but you just had to break my heart at the end, dude. What's up? Uh, so, uh, you know, it's another one of those things that, like, what can we shoot? 
Who do yeah. we have? Oh, I got Dante. I got uh, this daughter. And then my younger daughter played her as a baby, you know? Oh, cool. And it was it was like we were just starting to, like, get into that again of shooting and filming. And I was involving my kids and seeing if they wanted to do it. And and obviously they did because she went on to play Cassandra Cain in Birds of Prey. Yeah. You know? I think it's because of this. I'm I'm accrediting it. She got her beginnings at Me and the Chef and then turned into, you know, Birds of Prey, whatever. But Me and the Chef, oh, that's where it's at. Oh, man. I, I've had other fathers call me and say, you know, me and my daughter, we watch this all the time. We think it's so cute. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give you a little insight here. Here we go. You watch the movie Chef? Yes. Fantastic. John Favreau. Yes. Their opening sequence is just like ours. Ooh. So, so we were like, did they see our film at a film festival? <laughs> I'm going to say yes. <laughs> you know? Inspiration comes from everywhere, Derek. Yeah, I know. But I was like, they pay us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They knew. I loved it. I thought it was great. I also was like, how did you get a kitchen? This is nuts. So, uh, you know, I was catering and I, I put the word out and just kept asking people. And one of the catering ladies I knew had a friend who was opening up a restaurant and it wasn't open yet. Mm -hmm. And they let us go in there and shoot. What? Yeah. You just got to keep asking. I mean, and we also got that grocery store. We just made a bunch of calls. Right. And they let us come in. I want to say at like six in the morning when they were before they opened. Uh -huh. and, and steal some shots, you know? Dude, that's spirit. It's that It's that go get it spirit, like we're going to make this happen. I know, I got to do a lot more of that. That is so inspiring. You got it in you already. I've seen it. I uh, Thank you for reminding me, you yeah, know? I'm here for you, pal. <laughs> and then speaking of fun roles, I mean, you get these characters that are in these big movies and they just steal the show. And Taz is for sure one of those. Oh, I loved you in the first purge. We had so much fun shooting that movie. How could you not? It, it was in Buffalo. Um, we shot in the middle of the night a lot of times in in like a, a bad part of town that was like still occupied. So we'd be shooting these machine guns oh. and people would come down and they'd be like, my baby's sleeping. And oh, no. I, I don't know how they made this movie happen, you know, <laughs> like over there. And I guess they just paid them off, and it, you know. But there yeah. were so many shells on the ground that we would walk on. Really? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got to use a shotgun. That's fun. Oh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Is there any recoil to that at all? Because they're blank. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's, 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 there's still like quarter to half loads. Dude. Um, the armory guys, they tell you what it is, and then uh -huh. they show you. There's it, uh, The safety on that was really amazing you know and the stunt people were amazing and they had these walls that were just like you know 300 squids that they would shoot off and then they would shoot paint guns at you and oh shoot. yeah that's fun it was in the middle of the night so you're like taking a nap like okay we're gonna shoot now that you wake up you just jump the jack <laughs> you know real quick slap yourself we go oh we got this okay i'm up yeah exactly <laughs> That was one of those characters because I'd known your work prior and I remember being in the movie theater and then when I saw you like sitting in the lawn, you know, one of the three wise men, I was like, mm -hmm. oh, it's, hey, I know this person. <laughs> it was a really, it was really cool. What a great role. Thank you. And then last year, well, now it's two years ago. It was 2021. The Fabulous Filipino Brothers. Also fantastic. I, for anyone that hasn't done it, shooting a feature is a really big deal. It's like a Herculean task. The fact, like just finishing one, never mind it being good. Whose idea was this? You're, you're so right. Mounting any feature and shooting it is is like you're making miracles happen. Yeah, it's crazy. Because so many things happen and you have to substitute this and that. And so the one thing though, is that we were together again. Cool. And it was a passion project and we shot it in our hometown of Pittsburgh. Love it. So all our aunts and uncles and people in our community came out and supported and they were extras in the film that Phil Am center where the dancing is uh -huh. those are actually all of our aunts and uncles and people who we grew up with and that's the actual Phil Am center where we grew up doing you know our Christmas shows or oh cool our, our karate lessons or our tap lessons you know what I mean yeah. that was our like central meeting place so there was a lot of history in that town it's like you literally grew up on what we see as sets but for you, it's like your home. Yeah. That's so special. 
so the set dressing wasn't wasn't uh, so hard to do. You yeah, know what I mean? <laughs> you just had to remember. You're like, oh, this was it. Was it always going to be a feature? Whose idea was it? Uh, Dante and Darian had been talking about it that uh, they're going to do this movie with four vignettes, and each of us is going to get a vignette. Cool to show that you know we're all leading men, and there's different types of us instead of all of us. Hell yeah, competing for the same role. So Dante and Darian did the first pass. Dion came in on it. And then my sister came in and wrote on it as well. And then Dante has been going back and forth to the Philippines for funding and doing movies there and here. And he pitched a bunch of movie ideas in the last one. They said, you have anything else? And he goes, yeah, I have this movie called The Fabulous Filipino Brother. And they go, well, what's that? And then just off the pitch, they bought it and he came home and then he and Darian wrote it in two weeks. What? And then, yeah. And then we had the money and then it was like, okay, we're really shooting this. And then we got our friends together it wasn't a lot of money. It was Filipino money. Yeah. But it, was en- it was enough money for us to shoot. It goes farther than shoot. regular money. <laughs> it stretches. <laughs> no, it's not as much. In the Philippines, it stretches, but here right. it doesn't. <laughs> oh, did you have to like rock, paper, scissors to see who directed it? Or Dante's like, no, I got this. No, it was Dante's uh, directorial debut. Yeah, incredible. You know, I'm off with the kids with their careers because each of my kids have careers too right so i was like i'll show up for shooting but i can't help you know produce or write it you know sure uh but they did an amazing job and those are my real parents in the film love it Uh, and we just had a party every day you know we would we would shoot all day you know 10 to 12 hours then my aunt would make a big meal we'd all go to her house we we'd eat we'd drink we'd sing and then about 10 o'clock at night we'd go and rehearse and the her- rehearsal was involved more food and drinks and then shoot the next day. And it was such a special time in our lives. Yeah. How long was the shoot? Um, they did uh, about a week in the Philippines for Dante's segment. Cool. And, and then 10 days here in our hometown, you know, in Pittsburgh, California, in the Bay Area. So in like three weeks, you shot a feature. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that is so impressive. Like, I, I cannot overstate what that means. People that don't know, don't know. But that is huge. Wow. Well, the other thing, too, is, you know, we've been working with each other our whole lives. So we've seen each other put up a body of work and we know each other's strengths and weaknesses. So right. when they wrote it, they wrote to everyone's sweet spot. Sure. You know what I mean? So when we shot, it was, you know, maybe two, three takes. And then we had to move on. We had a lot to do. And then some days, like, the scene where I say we're jungle Asian, uh-huh. that that scene, they go, you're shooting that scene today. I go, no, no, we're shooting that tomorrow. They go, no, there was conflict and this and that. You have to shoot oh, no. it right now. <laughs> so, uh, okay, let's shoot it right now. Let me work on the line. And that's where I had to really trust my brother. And he kept saying, more, go bigger on it. I was like, bigger? Are you sure? You know, he's like, yeah. So then uh, that's how we got to where we got to in the film. Dude, that's also a testament to like the caliber of work that you guys are doing. To be able to do that, because not everybody can. And you pulled it out, and it it, it really worked. So I, I really enjoyed the movie. Oh, thank you. I'm glad. It's really one of those special projects to us that we, we love for people to see. It's available on Hulu. If it is. Hulu, you can watch it. <laughs> it is. I highly recommend it. I did find out afterwards that the fabulous Filipino brothers, you guys are Generation 2? Because our names are after my dad and his brothers. Remember I told you? Yeah. My my dad was Darius, but in, in real life, they called him Deo. Then oh, he's Danny, the oldest. Yeah. There's Danny Boy, there's Duke, and there's David. And my aunt was Doris, one of my aunts. Yeah. So out of the original four, your dad was the top one. Yes. Did you have a talk? At, like, Was there a point when he's like, listen, from one oldest to the other, this is what we do? <laughs> like, did you have that uh, a ceremony of passage to be like these are the responsibilities of the oldest uh not not so much as a talk but it just kind of felt that way my house is the the like central meeting place yeah where we have most of our parties and whatnot and people congregate but the stories in the movie are kind of interwoven like my dad's stories aren't necessarily his stories it, it, it might maybe danny boy portrayed those stories or, you sure. know what i mean yeah so they're makes it but they're all they're all crisscross so when uh, we premiered it at a special screening in our hometown at that same place. Um, some friends and family members were like, I know that story, but that's <laughs> not his story. That's his story. And I know that story, you know? 
Sure. It's like, I was at that cockfight. How, how, did you ever lose the rooster? No, but Peter was on set uh -huh. and they were very strict and they were like, chicken needs a break. And we're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so then we'd have to stop shooting and they would go and, um, and the guys that helped us, um, one of them was my uncle and they were really good about it. They, they showed me how to hold it and how to, um, you have to really kind of like squeeze it and it won't move, you know? Sure. And then when you want it to act up, you have to like prick it kind of thing. And if you, you would do that with your finger, which wasn't fun because then he would scratch me and peck it. You know? <laughs> the glamorous side of acting. Oh, yeah. Like when we shot the scene where I fought the chicken. Yeah. Uh, they said, we're just going to do it. I said, okay, let's do it. <laughs> so then they would throw it at me and then I would have to like <laughs> react, you know. <laughs> sure. That's what, you're talking method. That's the way to do it. <laughs> They had a fake one, and we're like, we're going to use this for certain things. And they didn't use it. Yeah, yeah, they didn't use it at all. Oh, no. uh, <laughs> like, why would we do that? We have a real one right here. Just jump. Yeah. Well, you can say you fought a chicken. Not many people can say that. No, no not many people can say that. You know? How, and then, my God. So you all did amazing. I want to say that up front. But the woman that played your grandma, I mean, come on, a star. Yeah, she was a friend's grandmother. Uh, oh, we, we were going around and, you know, there were times where she's like, I can't, I, I, I can't walk. So then we'd have to actually help her. And then, you know, sometimes she would say her lines. And I'd be like, grandma, don't say them yet. You have to wait, count, counting your head to 10. <laughs> and then she counted her head to 10. And then if you watch closer, sometimes you could see her counting. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and then she says it, but her just deadpan, just, oh. you know, say, uh, it was great. It worked out perfect. She's just there. After the, the food scene, and she's oh. just in the corner. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so, you know, that food scene was actually uh, stolen from Tom Jones. Oh. So, Tom Jones, uh, my brother had did that scene in acting class where he had to do this food scene with that actress. So we're like, oh, this is easy. We'll cast her. We'll do this. And they, they just went to town. They had a great time. Yeah. <laughs> we had to clear, the, we had to clear the, the set of all the kids. Yeah, <laughs> probably best. Yeah, it's like, we're about to do something to this pig that should not be witnessed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my god, it looked fun. That just the whole movie, everything about it, and then now knowing like how involved the family was and how like culturally, uh, like ingrained it is. It's just, it's a beautiful piece of work. It really is. Thank you, thank you. And then I know after that you went on to do Mayor of Kingstown. I mean, do you speak Spanish? Uh, so I took Spanish in high school. Okay. And um, I worked in restaurants for a long time. And the way you had to speak in Spanish to get your food from the cooks in the kitchen. Oh, uh, okay. And okay. Um, when I got the role, I had to go to quarantine in Canada for two weeks. And I just immersed myself in uh, Duolingo and just practiced Spanish. I still do Duolingo. Same. Today. Uh, I do it every day, you know? Yeah. Got to get that streak. I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm on. I'm on. I lost my initial streak. Now I'm on 500. I'm on 500, oh, though. 500? Dude, I just hit 35, and I feel great. You showed up <laughs> 500. <laughs> Keep going. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. We're, you're now my accountability buddy. This is a uh, thing. I, uh, after this, send me your um, username, whatever, and I'll follow you. That way, when you hit, like, you know, a, a goal, I'll be like, yeah, 50 days. I'll, yeah. yeah, we'll get the, that high five. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I didn't know Mayor of Kingstown was shot in Canada. That's cool. Season one was. Season one was in Toronto. Gotcha. Um, and then season two, we shot in Pittsburgh. Ah, which one? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was my first time in, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. <laughs> the other Pittsburgh, you mean? The other Pittsburgh with the eight, <laughs> the big brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there is there a trick or like a process you go through to do like guest star or recurring roles? Because it, I can't imagine that it's easy to go onto a set where it's got to feel like it's somebody else's house for a little bit because you're going in for a time and then you're backing out. You know what I mean? Recurring is far more easier. Yeah. You know, because uh, you go, hey, remember I was here before? And they go, oh, yeah, you were. <laughs> yeah. But the audition process is all the same. You have to really look at the material and decide what it's for, you know. Sure. This was this was a cop show and I was like, just keep it simple, you know, um, have mm -hmm. my character did the Spanish. And it was during the pandemic. So I, I just filmed it at home. Sure. And they, they called and they said we're interested and then they worked it out and I went, you know. And I spent the whole summer there in 
2021. Dude. Yeah. What an experience. And he's Filipino. How cool is that? Who? Kino. Oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Who? Yeah. Derek. <laughs> no, I thought you said someone else. You said Kino. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I couldn't hear for a second there. <laughs> no, I, well, I said he's Filipino. I made him Filipino. And um, my man, I was like, he's Filipino, he speaks Spanish. And they're like, oh, that sounds good. You know? Yeah, get in there. So I don't think it was written as Filipino, you know? Even better. So you showed up. Yeah. Dude, I love that. And on this scale, I mean, something like a Paramount Plus series where you get to bring your culture into, I mean, how cool is that? It was fun. You know, the creators of it, um, Hugh and Taylor, and everyone, everyone was very nice and they just let me do my thing. And But it's a different tone, you know, it's very small. Actually, right. Very, very small. Sure. Very, uh, what is it? Subtle, reserved. Yeah. Subtle. Those words. Subtle. Taylor Sheridan words. Yes. I love it. And they brought you back for your, you're in the second season. I mean, you did something, right? Uh, like I said, Hugh, uh, the creator and showrunner is also a, an actor. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, even when we went to go shoot season one, he goes, look, you don't have a lot of lines in this, but I'm going to keep throwing you bits and involving you. And when season two comes around, we're going to bring you back. And even when he brought me back on season two, he's like, oh, I'm so happy you're here. We're going to bring you back again for season three. Trust That's me. That's cool. So it's nice when, when they're, they're very welcoming and they take care of you, you know? Yeah. It really is. It's got to be, especially, like I said, that scale, the kind of nerves where you're like, I got to get in here. I got to do this right. To have that, I don't know, just sort of human moment of like, hey, I see you. We're here. It's going to be all right. That's got to make a huge difference in the way you work. Yeah. Well, you know, and I got to say, is like, it's like, I'm like, within the last five years, I really like have settled in and that imposter syndrome has gone away finally. Oh, cool. Okay. So it does go away. Yeah, it goes away. And I feel like <laughs> I, am, I do belong here. Hell I belong yeah. here and I deserve, you know, I deserve to be here. So Yeah, you do. And then, I mean, I'm Jedi Brian. We can't I know. we can't not. Dude, you're in Star Wars. I, I, I had never dreamed of it, you know. I, I, I met Han Solo, remember? And I told yeah. him I, I enjoyed you. <laughs> and, and, you know, so it was another pandemic thing, you know, like you you're filming at home and you're reading the skies and and I'm trying to figure out what this is for. And I'm like, oh, maybe this is for Umbrella Academy or this and that. Yeah. And then I book it and they won't tell me what it is. They call it Joshua Tree. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. So then I go for the fitting and you're looking around. And you're like, this is interesting. And then they go, do you know what you booked? And I go, no. They turn the board around and it's all Star Wars. And they're like, you're in the Star Wars universe. This is Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I was like, I was freaking out inside. Yeah, but I, I was like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Best acting you've ever done was right there. <laughs> yeah. And they go, this is the saloon. You're going to be the new saloon owner. That's the old saloon owner. And then they had like this other like aliens on there. And I'm like, do I have to wear prosthetics? And they go, yeah. oh, no, you're humanoid. And I was like, yes. Yeah. You know? Your face. Yeah, exactly. So then we tried on all the, the, the stuff. And I was like, I, I went and called my wife. You're not supposed to tell anyone, but I had to tell her. Of course, you of know, course. it's implied. And, uh, and, and, you know, we were going around for events at the time, too, for the side of the Filipino brothers. And they're like, what are you working on? I was like, oh, man, I wish I could tell you guys. But I can't. <laughs> you know, those NDAs. <laughs> yeah. But I go, but trust me, it's going to be something big. So then after I saw people afterwards, they're like, oh, that's what you were talking about. I was like, yeah. Dude, just it happened. It's real. That's a thing that happened in your life. So I show up to the set. This is a really cool story. Yeah, and, talk to me. Uh, we're shooting, and the camera crew is the same camera crew from Birds of Prey. Oh. The second unit director and the stuntmen are all from Birds of Prey. So I'm on set, and they're all in the walkie-talkies. You can hear, Cassandra Kane's dad's here. Cassandra Kane's dad's here. <laughs> Why is Cassandra Kane's dad here? Oh, he's in front of the camera. So the director, Deborah Chow, came up to me. She's like, what's going on here? Why is everyone talking about you? Yeah. I go, I go, oh, because we all had just worked recently together because my daughter was on this DC movie and I explained it to her and then she said, oh, and then um, it was just, it was just really cool. And you know, the one thing too, is you can't have your phone on set. So right. I'm going around and I'm like touching every droid I can, <laughs> uh, molesting Good. an R2 unit, you know, just try to commit it to memory. Get in there. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I said, can I see your lightsaber? I'm playing with a lightsaber. 
without the saber and then i'm playing with the one with the saber Dude. you know yes ch trying to fulfill all my childhood <laughs> fantasy dreams you know you have to yeah oh my god how long was that shoot so for me it was three days okay um we did uh two days with the main unit and then the third day with the second unit where a lot of the stunts were and the close-ups of like my hands and sure uh, my eyes and certain things um but uh, it, it wasn't long enough <laughs> yeah <laughs> how quick was the turnaround from like the time you got the audition to the time you're shooting um i want to say a month maybe a month or two okay you know you go for so many things you kind of forget about it and then when they call they're interested you're like oh which one was that you know but uh and that, that was so 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 much fun that's all i can say i bet and it, it happened. Like, for the rest of time, you are a part of the Star Wars universe. You own that saloon on Tatooine, Derek. There are Filipinos in space in Yes, Star there Wars. is. And they're, <laughs> and they're entrepreneurs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. And then I saw a couple days ago, it got announced that you got something coming up called Versus. And you get to work with your son. Yes. Yes. So I one of my missions is to help emerging um, film writers and uh artists especially if they're filipino and uh yeah. this guy he wrote is it's a full-length feature but we're only shooting uh a short version of it and it's his story and his love for street fighter 2 and he had me at street fighter 2 yeah um and uh we're shooting it uh next month actually nice and uh the whole dynamic between the father and the son, uh, we, me and my son, we both identified it with it. Uh, and we we're like, oh, we could play this, you know? Yeah. So we're, we're really excited to shoot that. And, and Dante came on as an executive producer for that as well. And the director, writer, director, editor, Joel Sanchez, he's, he's really talented. It, it helps when you have a project that like your heart's in it, you know? It just makes it work better, I think. It does. But, you know, we're also always shooting things, you know, like, my daughter's just shot something and my other daughter shot something. So yeah. uh, if there's anyone out there, I'm saying like, you got a story, write it, write what you know. And I, we went and did this college conference in Chicago and I told them, I said, write it, call me if I'm available. Yeah. You know, let, let's make it happen. I love that. It's that, that just that get it spirit. And like, now's the time. No time's promise to get out there. Exactly. I love it. And just like that, Derek, We've been talking for an hour. You survived. I survived, Brian. Look at you. I wasn't sure if you'd make it, but you did. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a blast. Like, I knew I was going to like you a lot, but you exceeded all of my expectations. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. This was fun talking to you and, and getting to remember all the things I've done. Yeah, it's what I'm here for, pal. So before I release you back into the wild, I got to ask, where can people find you online? Where can they find your stuff? Talk to me. Oh, yeah. I'm on Instagram at Derek underscore Bosco, B-A-S-C-O. I'm on Facebook, Derek Bosco. I'm on Twitter, Derek Bosco. Yeah, you can find me there. Yeah, you're findable. And on the new season of Mayor of Kingstown. Yeah. Look at you. You're everywhere. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter and Instagram. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. There you'll find my demos, short films, and a bunch of other really fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to pick you up some sweet gear. Also, I've made a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly and get early releases of the show, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Daryl, Daz, Ben, and Chris. Your support means so much to me, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, 
be well.